there and welcome back for more Explore Tulsa. Now Trish, if you had like 50 vintage motorcycles or more, what would you do with them? Ooh, probably have a garage sale. They all gotta go today. No, you'd have to build a museum like Jim and John L. did in Grove, Oklahoma with Second Kick Cycle Works. Motorcycle people come in here and can't believe it because we've got those one-way windows and they have no idea what's in here and they come in and they're, they really, <laughs> their eyes really light up, light up. Where did you have them all before you opened this? <laughs> That's their biggest question. The first look on their face is worth everything because they walk in the door and they, they look around and they go, my gosh, we didn't know this was here. What I call my first big motorcycle was a a 1971 TC90 Suzuki. It was a real big bike to me back then. I was about 14 years old, 15. I was fortunate enough to uh, make my living working in the motorcycle industry. I never was a good racer, but I did a lot of tuning on race bikes. Really, the motorcycles have been a great deal for my family because we all got together and that was our short vacations going to the racetrack and, and, and riding and stuff. But I was very happy to have this uh, place here. We had the uh, 1937 BSA sitting in our living room for several years. So it was, it was actually very, made me very happy to be able to sit it here in the museum. We, we totally rebuilt the building. It took me two years to do the building and, and restore it to what it is. Now, which is just as much fun as building a motorcycle to me. I, it's what I do, you know. I work with my hands, that kind of guy. We're both, uh, both have a sickness with motorcycles, you know. We're motorcycle nuts. I had motorcycles at home in my own shop, but only my close friends ever got to see them. And I thought, boy, to have a museum where everybody can see them, uh, and a lot of memorabilia in here I had collected through the years. I tried to represent all a lot of different kind of race bikes here. We got flat track racers. Flat track's the only American racing sport, motorcycle sport, flat track bikes. I've got a, a Speedway motorcycle over here, um, trials bikes over here. I've got enduro bikes. The Harley is a factory built race bike, 1948 WRTT, and uh, it's a 45 cubic inch, and it was ridden by Floyd Emdy, the original owner who I got it from. A lot of guys would take these Hodakas and modify them and they made everything out of them. Motocross racers, flat track bikes, trials bikes, uh, speedway bikes. There's another motorcycle over there, a Veliset, which uh, set a record at Bonneville in 1952. And the gentleman that originally owned it was a good friend of mine and uh, so I got it from him. Uh, it was built and, and run by a guy named Lloyd Bulmer and uh, broke a speed record back then at almost 120 miles an hour. There's a lot to see in here, a lot, a lot of history. We opened the sandwich shop uh, largely because of Jim's dream of having an antique motorcycle museum. And so we opened the sandwich shop to make enough money to fund his project so that we wouldn't have to charge for the entrance of the museum. Well, these old bikes just have the history, you know, and they got a lot of, there's a lot more metal in them than the, all of the new ones are a lot of plastic. But these are, these are like old cars, just like old cars, they have a, a lot more character. He's done this for 40 years, and actually so many of them he uh, has rebuilt. And that's what he did for uh, stress relief, and he loves it. I've, I don't know that I've ever known anyone to love motorcycles like he does. 